were talking about sets of numbers. Remember, we talked about rational numbers and irrational numbers. And as we discussed, irrational numbers lots of times come from square roots. So we're going to talk a little bit more about square roots. So remember, take notes. All right, square roots. Square roots are a special kind of radical. You probably have heard that term before. You can have square roots, you can have cubed roots, you can have fourth roots, you can have hundredth roots. But square roots are what we're going to talk about today. So for an example, square root of 16, you're looking for, and I'm sure you guys know this, you're looking for a number which multiplies times itself to equal 16. So square root of 16 is 4, because 4 times 4 equals 16. Now, this is always a little confusing. This symbol here denotes the positive root. Because I bet there's some of you out there saying, wait a minute, doesn't negative 4 times negative 4 also equal 16? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Ms. Stewart. I right. always think that. I always, like, why do I always get that mixed up? I know. So, you are right in thinking that negative 4 times negative 4 equals 16, but whenever you see the square root symbol, it by definition means find the positive root. In other words, find the positive number, which multiplies our integer, that multiplies times itself to equal 16. Okay? Same thing, square root of 25. What times itself, what positive number times itself equals 25? That would be 5, because? 5 times 5 is 25? You're catching on to this. I think I got these it. are really nice numbers. In fact, these are rational, mm -hmm. as you pointed out, Mr. Haas, in our last video, because these square roots are giving us nice whole numbers, nice integers. These are called perfect squares. And it's a very nice thing to have a list of perfect squares in your brain, in your notes. And the way I like generating perfect squares is just start with one. Well, I could start with zero. What's zero times zero? That's zero. Zero. Not particularly handy. All right, let's go to our next integer. One, one times, times one. 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 That's a perfect square. Two times two? Four. Four. Three times three? Nine. Nine. Four times four? Mm. Five, five times, times five? See where I'm going with this, Mr. Hobbs? Yeah. <laughs> Some good numbers there. All right, you have to make sure I'm not missing any. Mike that was eight times eight? <clears throat> eight times eight, nine times nine, ten times ten. Heck, I could go on forever, but I'm running out of room. How many perfect squares are there in the world? I guess there's an infinite number of them. So. Seems like a lot, yeah. So those are your perfect squares. So make sure you jot those down, have those on the piece of paper in front of you, because what we're about to do next, you're going to want to have that list. All right? As you do that, I'm going to erase this top here. And we're going to talk about how to simplify square roots that are not perfect squares. What I was just doing there before was simplify, right? If I say simplify the square root of 36, you'd say, oh, well that equals six. I just simplified it, okay? But what if I ask you to simplify something like the square root of 12? Oh my goodness, that's not a perfect square. No, it isn't. That's not on my list. Yeah. Mm. If I put that in my calculator, I'm going to get some decimal that goes on and on and on forever because it's a... Irrational number. Irrational number. Now, when I say simplify, I'm not asking you to find that decimal approximation. And I say approximation because you can't possibly write out all the decimal places. I'm asking you to simplify this to see if there is another way in which you can write it. Okay. You can make an estimate, let's see, square root of 12, well let's see, 12 is somewhere between 9 and 16. So the square root of 12 is going to be between 3 and 4, about, somewhere in there. But again, 
I'm not really asking for that when I'm saying simplify. I'm wanting you to look into the heart of 12 and see if there's a perfect square lurking there. Hmm. Yeah? So what I do is I think of the factors of 12. Remember factors like 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, things that multiply to equal 12. What I do is I start high up on my list and I find the biggest perfect square that is a factor of 12. Shriek when I get there, Mr. Haas. Now. Uh, yeah, four is a factor of 12 and it's a perfect square. So I'm gonna rewrite square root of 12 as the square root of four times three. Does that seem fair? Four times three is 12. It is. That works. Okay. Now I'm gonna do something that we'll talk about a little bit more in class. But square root of 4 times the square root of 3, believe it or not, is the same as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. You can just split up that square root split thing? Up that square totally root. works? And okay. if you don't believe me, you can throw that in your calculator and you'll see, mm. oh yeah, those are the same. All right. Thing. You know where I'm going with this? I think I do. Okay. Well, the square root of 4 is a perfect square. It's a perfect square. So can't I just write that as 2? So that's just 2. Yeah. All right. Square root of 3, can't do anything. So I have simplified the square root of 12. Got it. And if I put square root of 12 in my calculator, as we said, we get 3 point blah, 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 blah. If you put 2 times the square root of 3 in your calculator, you'll get that same exact number, 3 point blah, 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 blah. These are absolutely identical. They are equivalent. They're just in two different forms. Turn off that cell phone. Oh, that's my cell phone. All right. How do we feel? Do we have time for one more example? Absolutely. All right, let's do one more example. Let's simplify. Let's simplify the square root of 18. All right, is that a perfect square? Mm, I don't think so. No, it's not. It's an irrational number. Simplify means I want to look in the factors, look at the factors of 18 and see if one of those is a perfect square. So let's, again, start big and move on down. Right there, yeah. Boom, nine. Nine is a factor of 18. I'm gonna rewrite this as nine times two. Again, you don't have to write all of these steps, but I'm just writing them so you see the logic. Okay, square root of nine is three. Square root of 2 is just the square root of 2. I have simplified the square root of 18 to equal 3 times the square root of 2. That's it? I seem to like 3s and 2s. Hmm. That's it. All right. Can we do one more? Let's do one more. Do you want to give me one, Mr. Let's Ross? do square root of 32. Square root of 32. All right. Fantastic. So. Let's think about the factors of 32. All right, I'm going down, and this is when I like to go from big to small rather than from small to big. So let's look for the biggest factor of 32 that's on my perfect square list. Let's see, 25, no, no I don't I think so. you got one more there. 16, there you go. ah, 16 does divide nicely into 32. Okay, square root of 16 times the square root of 2. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 2 stays inside, and there we go. So can't I just go, you know, sometimes students say this, and I'm not sure, you know, I get mixed up myself, but 4 is also a perfect square. Can't I just, like, keep going and take the square root of 4 and get, like, 2 times the square root of 2? Well, you would, but that's not in a square root anymore. Oh, I see. So I've already kind of... You're un done. So you don't just keep going. No. As soon as the square root symbol is done, ah, square root of 16 is just 4. I, uh, okay, I got gotcha. you. done. Because I, yeah, I get that mixed up sometimes. I, <laughs> you know what else? Well, actually, another thing that some students might say is, well, wait, I didn't pick 16. I picked 4 and 8. Oh, yeah. Right? Now what do you do? You're stuck. Well, not really, no? oh. because I could say, all right, well, the square root of 4 times the square root of 8, that's looking okay so far. 
That's 2 times the square root of 8. But wait a minute, I think something goes into 8. Ah, so for this one, you're not totally done. Now you have to do a second cycle and say, wait, I can rewrite 8 as 4 and 2. Let's just go straight to that. And then we have 2. Hmm, I guess those must be multiplied together. Oh, well, that's comforting. You end up at the same place. No. Isn't right? math great? Math is so As great. long as you follow the rules, it's, you're going to end up at the same place. You're going to end up at the same place, and there are lots of different ways you can do it. All right, make sure you have good notes. We're going to try some of these when you get into class. Thank you, Mr. Haas.